it's a great pleasure once again to join ACSS um, in doing this uh, uh, these remarks, particularly on the occasion of the uh, uh, Emerging Security Sector Leaders Seminar. Um, I know I don't have much time. Uh, I would like to go straight into what I have to say, and then hopefully we can have um, a discussion. Uh, transnational and violent crimes uh, have become the biggest threat to peace, uh, security, and development in Africa. Uh, of course, uh, we still have pockets of armed conflict around the continent, but the speed at which transnational organized crime and violent crimes such as terrorism and violent extremism are growing is beyond measure and a serious concern for the continent. Recognizing this, uh, Ambassador Bankole, the Commissioner for Peace and Security, of the Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security at the African Union, um, stated uh, recently to a meeting of uh, Africa's Chiefs of Defense staff that transnational organized crime has become a serious threat to peace and security in Africa. So this is a major rec a recognition of the role that transnational organized crime and terrorism play in terms of their threat to peace and security. One does not need to look too far to prove Bankole right. A growing number of peacekeeping missions in Africa today are not created to, to keep peace, but rather to create peace. And I think we should call them by their name, uh, peace creating missions, not peacekeeping missions. These missions, such as the AU mission in Somalia, the SADC mission in Mozambique, the multinational joint tax force in the Lake Chad Basin, are essentially created to combat terrorism and transnational organized crime. Unlike traditional peacekeeping, uh, traditional peacekeeping missions, Terrorism or terrorist missions and organized crime syndicate do not negotiate a ceasefire. They hide to fight another day. So these new wars against terrorism and transnational organized crime are endless, are endless wars or wars without end. They are costing a fortune and the international community is not ready for it yet. The question to answer this evening, the first question that Anneli posed to me, is to look at who are those committing this organized atrocious act. Remember that organized crime is a regular job for some people. Organized crime has infiltrated every segment of society today in Africa to the extent that it has become the new normal. I am joining you from Pretoria, the political capital of South Africa, but I'm forced to stay in the office this late because if I go home, I cannot guarantee electricity because the electricity company, ESCOM, has been infiltrated and captured by organized crime. The result is that millions of South Africans go for several hours each day without electricity. So who are those doing it? It is the same ESCOM workers, the greedy ones. So sometimes you don't need to look very far to identify organized crime syndicate or criminals. In some countries, government can't function because they have been completely captured by organized crime. So organized crime is not a myth in Africa. It is a reality. You see it in the street. You see it in the market. You see it in schools. You see it in hospitals. You see it everywhere. It is what you breathe when you are in government. And you even see it in churches. This ability to penetrate every segment of society 
is what makes organized crime the most dangerous security threat to Africa. Organized crime today is the currency or the catalyst for most criminalities, conflict, and other factors of insecurity. Organized crime in Africa has existed and thrived in opaque. Very little was known about it, with the exception of glimpses provided by intermittent and sometimes shallow ones of studies. But this is changing since 2019 with the launch of the first Africa Organized Crime Index by uh, the ENACT project. ENACT is the acronym for Enhancing Africa's Response to Transnational Organized Crime. It is one of the European Union's flagship funding projects in Africa. It is implemented by a consortium of three institutions, the Institute for Security Studies, Interpol, and the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. The index is a tool to generate evidence-based knowledge to support tailored responses to organized crime. As we prepare to launch the third iteration of this year, uh, the, the third iteration this year, the index is meeting its expectation as a knowledge hub on organized crime in Africa. I will strongly encourage each and every one of you who have not yet done so to visit our website at www.enactafrica.org and immerse yourself in our numerous groundbreaking studies. According to the index, the perpetrators of organized crime in Africa can be categorized into four main actor types. We have the mafia type actors, who are your gangs and groups such as the Nigerian Yahoo Boys and Black Ass Fraternity Groups. I think it is also important for you to know that the Africa, the, the Africa organized criminal landscape is characterized by Italian, Mexican, Russian, Japanese, Albanian, Chinese, and Italian mafia groups. The second criminal actor type consists of traditional criminal networks, which are mostly loose networks of groups or individuals acting in concert. The third category is state embedded actors. These are public or government or state officials who connived, act as accomplices, enablers, or catalysts, or are themselves directly involved in criminality. This is currently the biggest criminal actor in Africa. The fact that many of these malfeasant individuals have not been brought to justice implicate state, it, the state itself as a criminal actor. The fourth category of criminal actors is called foreign actors. If the others, the three others, are local or homegrown, this category encompasses any foreign entity involved in criminality. I have mentioned Mexicans, Italians, Russians, Japanese, Chinese, Albanians, Czechs, and many other foreign criminal networks present in Africa. The foreign actor type is not limited to these networks. It includes criminal actors from other countries, including neighboring countries, so any foreign element. The biggest threat is not only its violent manifestation and deleterious effect on development, but also and even more <clears throat> concerning our, uh, our sheer lack of knowledge about its death its debt and crippling impact. Organized crime has emerged as one of Africa's most complex threats to security and development. Its ability to intertwine or form alliances with other criminalities 
such as terrorism and violent extremism, one can also mention armed conflict, has not only made the phenomenon more resilient, but also more difficult to combat. This means that any successful response to organized crime must also deal with the nexus with other insecurity factors. The ENACT project came about in response to that desire to bridge the knowledge gap and provide policymakers with the appropriate and evidence-based information and tools for effective response to the scourge of organized crime, which has become a cancer on Africa's development. Organized crime occupies a considerable chunk with some studies estimating over 50% of Africa's economy. ENACT is a project, as I mentioned, funded by the European Union. Uh, the, the project has emerged as one of the leading research organizations on organized crime in Africa, with over 500 research publications within the period of five years. With our regional organized crime observatories in, in Africa's five geographic regions, the routine monitoring and documenting of trends and early manifestations of organized crime are unprecedented in the continent history. Our data provide the most comprehensive picture of organized crime, issues such as sandalwood trafficking, the mafia behind land grabs and fraud, illegal sand mining, illegal artisanal cotton mining, state embedded actors, trafficking of fuel and wildlife, and trafficking of young girls for prostitution, and the mafia groups trafficking young African footballers and many others that had remained localized have now been exposed by ENACT. The Africa Organized Index is one of the tools that is making Africa organized crime known to policymakers by measuring uh, the real impact of organized crime on the continent. With the index, it is not easy to know why some countries are more affected and others are not, or others are more resilient. It helps countries to know uh, which specific organized crime threat affect which country or region and what to do to become more resilient to the threat of organized crime. One critical discovery of the trends between 2019 and 2021 was, the, was that during the intervening period, criminality increased while resilience declined. Previously, it was impossible to detect the trends in criminality in Africa for lack of consistent monitoring and evaluation of the threat. With the ENAC now for five, six, six years, we are able to determine where the trend is going to. Is it positive or is it negative? This alone tells us whether we are winning the war against organized crime and where to redouble our effort. In addition to categorizing criminal actors, the index measures criminality, which means the prevalence of organized crime market and organized crime actors, and resilience. Measures taken by countries that help to reduce criminality or provide defensive or deterrent mechanisms that keep organized crime away. Criminality is measured by 10 indicators comprising the most prevalent criminal market across the continent. These include human trafficking, human smuggling, 
arms trafficking, flora crimes, fauna crimes, non-renewable resources, heroin trade, cocaine trade, cannabis trade, and synthetic drug trade. We are fully aware that there are many more markets, but these are the most common across the continent. These are complemented by four broad categories of actors, which I have just described previously. The other key component of the index is resilience, which is measured by a set of 12 indicators that help mitigate the impact or prevent, or prevent organized crime. So it is not always about a glass half empty, but also about a glass half full. The key resilient indicators include national policies and laws, territorial integrity, non-state actors, law enforcement, political leadership, and governance, anti-money laundering, economic regulatory environment, judicial system and detention, government transparency and accountability, prevention, victim and witness support. These indicators represent attempt to create common architecture for preventing and combating transnational organized crime. In the index, we see a tool for standardizing the language and assessment of organized crime. Pay pressure on state to act. A tool for monitoring trends and a comprehensive tool for action and organized crime for action on organized crime, ending the current piecemeal approach that has prevailed until the creation of the index. With the index also, we can, we can now map the geographic or organized crime areas on the continent to know exactly where the problem is. In Africa, according to regions and countries, we hope that state can also map the threats within their borders to locate areas and populations of vulnerability. The key findings of the 2021 index tell us that human trafficking is the most prevalent organized crime type in Africa. A second finding is that the majority or over 60% of people in Africa live in countries with high criminality and in countries with low resilience, 77% of the continent's population. The gap between criminality and resilience grew wider amid the COVID-19 pandemic. This was also a key finding of the 2021 uh, index. Criminal market, and criminal actors expanded their influence across the continent. The report also found that state embedded actors grew more powerful amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Africa has the second highest level of criminality, only second to Asia globally. Conflict provide a breeding ground for organized crime was also a major finding in the report. The report also find that the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, has the highest criminality followed by Nigeria and the Central African Republic in Africa. The correlation and dynamics of criminality and resilience in Africa the index or the, the uh, yes, the index categorized this in four uh, broad, what we call quadrants. So there are, may, there are four main quadrants that comes out of the index. So countries are split along these four quadrants. So you have countries with low criminality and high resilience. 
Then you have countries with low criminality and low resilience. You also have a category of countries with high criminality and high resilience. Countries with high criminality and low resilience. In terms of the, the ranking of the, the, the criminal market, as I've said, that human trafficking was found to be the biggest criminal market in Africa. And we also come to discover that this is the trend throughout the world, that human trafficking is the biggest criminal market. Um, the index found that arms trafficking is the second biggest criminal market in Africa, followed by non-renewables. In terms of resilience, I would just look at it in terms of regions, which region is more resilient to organized crime in Africa and which region is not. We found that resilience is lowest in Central Africa and East Africa in that order. And that criminality is highest in East Africa and West Africa in that order. Then to answer the question about what factors allow for African states and society to build resilience, let me take you quickly toward, uh, through what the resilience index is all about. I will answer the question by recounting to you what I'm going to tell you now. Indeed, the Africans are no longer sleeping. New initiatives are emerging to strengthen collective security and law enforcement in Africa. I talked about the issue of uh, peacekeeping, the, the, the multiplication of peacekeeping missions across Africa, or what I call peace creating missions, because uh, in most cases, there are no peace to keep. They, they, they are there to create the peace. So in Southern Africa, where I'm speaking to you, in addition to national initiatives, SADC has adopted a regional integrated strategy to prevent and combat organized crime. So this is a collective measure taken by countries in the Southern African region. We've also found that countries in Eastern and Central Africa have taken measures to increase collaboration between the two regions in the fight against, against criminality. For example, the two regions signed an agreement on police matters and criminality, which allows police in the two regions from whichever country they might come from to pursue criminals into other countries across regions. So it's not only crossing national borders, but also crossing regional borders. We've already seen this in application between uh, Kenya and Gabon, between Chad and Sudan, where they have been able to pursue criminals across frontiers, which previously was not possible. This includes the adoption of a protocol to prevent and eradicate the perennial problem of cattle rustling in the region. This is in Eastern Africa. In Central, uh, Central African states have adopted action plans and are currently working on a regional threat. I know my time is up. I'm just wrapping up um, the presentation. Beyond these regional measures, African countries are also taking extra regional and inter-regional measures to combat uh, criminality. That's integrating the continent to eliminate borders. So we now have, because in, a, in, a, in, in an era of criminality without borders, we need policing without borders, which is what is going on now. The last thing I want to mention is the role of security, since we've talked about the police. I believe, and the ENAC research shows that the security sector has been compromised. There's just too much corruption in the sector, which has undermined its ability to fight crime. It is therefore important if we want to make a difference in eradicating or in controlling organized crime 
to first of all fix the security sector, remove the threat of corruption, and then equip it with the necessary tools for it to do its job. I thank you very much.